This session was recorded at the Display Innovation Workshop we held on the 23rd of March 2022 in Birmingham. Hello, good morning everyone. Um, yes, Patrick McDougall from Nexus Alpha. Um, I'm kind of tempted to say what they said. Um, it's really interesting to, to hear what all the other suppliers um, have been through in terms of their journeys. Uh, we started ours quite a long time ago. Um, haven't seen many of you um, for a very long time. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's good to be back. I'm just going to sort of talk a little bit about that journey um, and focus on some of the innovation we've done. Um, like the rest of the world, we've got some of our um, technology here today. We've brought one particular type along with us, which is LTN LCD. Um, so uh, yeah, as everyone else has said, come and have a wander around and talk to us about it. Um, so Nexus Alpha um, essentially supplies train operating companies um, with um, disruption information systems. So we supply 18 train operating companies, Transport for London, Docklands Light Railway, Network Rail, um, and essentially uh, we are the harbingers of bad news. So I, I apologise if anybody came by train. Um, if you were late, it wasn't our fault, but you probably found out about it because of us, which is a good thing, because what we're trying to do here is encourage people to use public transport. And by giving them confidence to travel in public transport, it means they'll use it. 99% of trains run, 94% of them arrive on time. So if you can find out there's a problem, you will carry on catching the train. Get to the station on Monday and there's no train. On Tuesday, there's no train. If you have a modal choice, you'll do something else. Um, if you still go to work, of course, anymore. Um, so some of the things we do um, in the next Alpha side, which, which I mentioned again because with the local authorities, other suppliers here, there's, there are data sources across the uh, industry that could be useful to other people. Yeah, line of route problems, trains are being disrupted because of a line side fire, uh, train updates, cancellations, alterations, delays, but also accessibility issues. No, um, no accessible toilets available on a, on a train might be really, really important to people. Um, and station updates, uh, unstaffed station, which is expected to be staffed. No one can get out a, a, you know, a wheelchair ramp, tickets you might not be able to buy. So we push all that information out and about. That's examples of um, accessibility. So again, you could imagine uh, bus systems near railway stations if people are doing interchanges. Some of this information could be really useful to, to share and spread around. Um, and then Nexus Alpha Low Power Systems, um, the clue is in the name. Uh, we thought that was quite clever. Um, Nexus Alpha Low Power Systems used to be the engineering division within Nexus Alpha. So we were, a, I guess, a railway disruption information business with kind of this lost signage division in it. Um, so uh, we broke the company out as a separate entity about 10 years or so ago, just to give a little bit of uh, focused identity. Um, uh, here is our journey. We've always done audio uh, and visual information systems. Um, we started supplying systems. I think Southampton were our first client 20 years ago. Uh, on the Robin Hood line, um, old technology, the science suppliers here will probably recognise. We put CRT screens in Bailey boxes using data pages supplied by Mercury Communications. I don't know who's old enough to remember this stuff, count the grey hairs that are left. Um, so that was about sending multiple pager messages, gluing them together. But even then we were doing audio information presentation as well. We always wanted our systems to be accessible to all, so that was, that was key. Um, we then moved on to TFT displays in West Lothian, sort of Southampton, um, on the journey. Um, and then obviously with the, the, the creation of Nexus Alpha Low Power Systems, um, the idea was really to focus on, you know, sustainable, as sustainable a system as you could possibly get. Um, uh, for those of you uh, who know the maths, um, 27,000 times the energy that we generate on the planet through all sorts of energy uh, generation hits the Earth every day from the sun. Okay, it's quite useful, uh, keeps the energies warm, keeps us alive, we kind of grow food and stuff with it. But there is enough going spare that you can use it for real-time information science. Um, you know, if you could design an energy supply chain now, you'd go for localism. You know, the Victorians didn't have photovoltaic cells, unfortunately. They just had dead trees in the ground that they dug out and burnt effectively after waiting a few million years. So you wouldn't design an energy supply chain to shift um, carbons around the planet now. You know, open cast mining them, putting them on... Oh, I don't know, trucks, putting them on barges, sailing them across places, putting them in power stations, setting fire to them, turning turbines, boiling water, putting them down wires across the countryside, losing 30% of the energy, then delivering them to a sign. You put something on top of the sign that would harvest the energy of the sun. And it's a lot easier as well, just in terms of environmental impact. You're not digging up roads. Um, you're not filling out 
paperwork in quadruple. We've got a client out in the US where you have to apply for sort of four or five different permits with the village, with the Illinois Department of Transport to get permission. Everything has to be drawn. Uh, anything that you dig up in the road, you have to do surveys for. So just the huge impact of, of anything that's connected. So anyway, we wanted to go down solar uh, route. We, um, we did some of the wind turbine work you maybe read about in the environmental documentation that you did. Um, uh, yeah, very unpredictable. Great if you can have a massive wind farm, um, but, uh, but not good on top of a sign. Um, I think it's worth saying, um, you can solar power anything. Of course you can. Um, solar and battery, that's what you need. You need an energy going in, and you need a way of storing it. Um, we were asked about 15 years ago if we could solar power a 2,500 nit 42-inch TFT at a bus stop. Of course you can, it was fine. We just had to build a hut to put the lead acid batteries in and buy the field next door and cover it in solar panels. Um, so, you know, you, you can do all this stuff, but obviously it's about absolutely reducing power. Um, you know, a five watt computer, nah, you know, you need a 50 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt computer. Um, we have prided ourselves, our systems are, all, are always on, connected 24 seven, so you don't have to kind of wait for them to jump to life. And they support audio. I mean, audio obviously is a bit of an unknown, someone comes along and presses your audio button every two minutes, you're going to use power. I mean, you might be kicking out 30 or 40 watts, but only for very small uh, amounts of time. Um, I say we use this um, uh, LTN, uh, uh, LCD technology, which is kind of akin to LED, I guess, but it uses a, a, a fraction of the a power associated with it. And again, as you've heard from others, there's, there's obviously there's React, uh, there's, there's Bluetooth triggers, uh, there's push button, we developed a, a Proxima, uh, detector so you wouldn't have to touch things. Um, I think we're all less scared of touching things now, but um, that was available during the, the pandemic as well. Um, again, it was interesting hearing, have you gone about talking about audio? Um, uh, place names can be awkward. So again, I think with all the other suppliers, we have a, a content management system that either interfaces to other content management systems, because we're not a real-time provider, like everyone here, I think, um, who maybe does more as well. Uh, we hoover up data from uh, anyone who's prepared to give it to us, um, as well as generating data in the other part of the business, Nexus Alpha. So yes, uh, Norfolk, um, Costacy is not Costacy, it's Cossy. So essentially you have to go in there and, and, and manipulate the phonemes. Uh, I heard acapella being mentioned by um, a supplier at the, at the back. Uh, we use the same technology. Um, we used to do natural speech and record every single segment because the type of messages that were being sent through were predictable, so you could splice everything together, um, but obviously a timetable changes, a new place name is needed, and you have to go and record that, which is very, very intensive. Um, so yeah, we go down the text-to-speech route now, which, uh, which works very well. Um, just a, a, a bit of innovation. Um, you, you probably haven't seen us for a while because we've probably been doing a bit too much innovation. We sort of disappeared down a hole sort of several years ago to generate um, lower power computers and other, other bits and pieces. So um, we are out and about and talking to people about it now. But um, we've, um, for the um, mobility forum meeting, we um, have just commissioned, we've called it, uh, slightly arrogantly, Hello Nexus, um, which is just a, a, a voice recognition system. So again, effectively, this is part of the transforming cities work that we got with um, Norfolk uh, County Council, who's one of our, our major clients here in the UK. Um, so you can now go to a bus stop and you can, you can have a conversation and you can ask it about, um, what the time is or, or where you want to go. Um, effectively putting some, some image and graphics behind it. Um, but there's a, there's a sort of a speech engine, so you can say things like arrivals or service after you've woken it up. Um, and we've trained it again. It's, it's, it's not an AI, it's not about to take over the world yet, but it's definitely machine learning. It's kind of uh, moving in that direction. Um, so uh, it'll recognize phrases and, 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 uh, and make announcements about it as well. Um, so yes, you know, we do a, a CMS, we do a range of systems. Our, our, our first flip dot systems went into ScotRail uh, 13 years ago, I think, 12 years or so ago. Um, and they consume two and a half watts, which isn't bad from a massive display that you can see from 50, 50 yards away. Um, the technology on those is, I don't know if you know the, the flip dots, it's, it's not suitable for bus stops because it's really right up in your face. Um, but for uh, railway stations where you might have one platform and you want to see information from a long way away, it's great. You apply power, you flip the dots using magnetism, and then you take power away. And obviously the image then just, just stays there, uh, which was really, uh, really effective. Um, the, I think the, the power of solar was revealed to me for the first time when they were being fitted. Um, 
I'm a McDougall, I can say this, it was, it was raining in Scotland, oddly enough, uh, and the team had taken a unit out of the back of the van with a, you know, just laid it on the ground. The heavens opened and it started to pour. And then miraculously, all the real-time departures started appearing on it when it was just kind of lying on the ground and they were all looking in the van. How can this work? Well, it's very obvious how it could work. It's got a solar panel on it. So the, ba you know, the batteries weren't connected, but there was just enough power coming through the panel lying on the ground to actually make the thing spring to life. Um, it's energy for free. Uh, why don't we use it? Um, okay, I guess that's a little bit of a potted history. I say we've got one particular variant over there. We've got LT and LCD, like the rest of the world. We've got e-paper solutions coming uh, along as well. Uh, flip dot if it's necessary. And we do TFT displays as well. We've got about 120 systems throughout Norfolk. And yes, at city centre bus stops, we've got monoliths, we've got large systems. Um, Norfolk wants to sweat the assets. So again, content management system putting uh, public health information onto the display screens as well, um, whatever you want to do. So um, a sign for all occasions. So, okay, thanks. Any questions? Thank you for listening. For more information on the work of RTIG, please visit our website, rtig.org.uk. Thank you.